My eyes are always on the Lord, for he rescues my feet from the snare. Turn to me and have mercy on me, for I am alone and poor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Now, mighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, live graciously on this confession of our loneliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. Leading the flock across the desert, he came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There an angel of the Lord appeared to Moses in a fire flaming out of a bush. As he looked on, he was surprised to see that the bush, though on fire, was not consumed. So Moses decided, I must go over and look at this remarkable sight and see why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw him coming over to look at it more closely, God called out to him from the bush, Moses, Moses. He answered, Here I am. God said, Come no nearer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. I am the God of your fathers, he continued, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face for he was afraid to look at God. But the Lord said, I have witnessed the affliction of my people in Egypt and have heard their cry of complaint against their slave drivers. So I know well what they are suffering. Therefore, I have come down to rescue them from the hands of the Egyptians and lead them out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Moses said to God, But when I go to the Israelites and say to him, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and if they ask me, What is his name? What am I to tell them? God replied, I am who am. Then he added, This is what you shall tell the Israelites. I am sent me to you. God spoke further to Moses. Thus shall you say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, 
and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. Thus is my name forever. Thus am I to be remembered through all generations. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial song. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my bless, all my beings bless his name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful. He pardons all your iniquities, heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction, crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord secures justice and the rights of all the oppressed. He has made known his ways to Moses and his deeds to the children of Israel. The Lord is kind and merciful. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. As for as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness toward those who fear him. The Lord is kind and merciful. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And all of them were baptized into Moses, in the cloud and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from a spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was the Christ. Yet God was not pleased with most of them, for they were struck down in the desert. These things happened as examples for us, so that we might, so that we might not desire evil things as they did. Do not grumble as some of them did, and suffer death by the destroyer. These things happened to them as an example. And they have been written down as a warning to us, upon whom the end of the ages has come. Therefore, whoever thinks he is standing secure should take care not to fall. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, word of God. Lord Jesus Christ. Repent, says the Lord, and the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Praise to you, word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Some people told Jesus about the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with the blood of their sacrifices. Jesus said to them in reply, do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were greater sinners than all other Galileans? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. Are those 18 people who were killed when the tower at Siloam fell on them? Do you think they were more guilty than everyone else who lived in Jerusalem? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. And he told them this parable. 
parable. There was once a person who had a fig tree planted in his orchard. And when he came in search of fruit on it, but found none, he said it to the gardener, For three years now I have come in search of fruit on this fig tree, but have found none. So cut it down. Why should it exhaust the soil? He said to him in reply, Sir, leave it for this year also, and I shall cultivate the ground around it and fertilize it. It may bear fruit in the future. If not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. something. Uh, this Friday, we will have a special Mass at 11 a.m. at St. Bridget. So this Friday, the 25th, 11 a.m. at St. Bridget. Why is it a special Mass? Because at this time, we will join with our Holy Father, Pope Francis, in union with the bishops of the world for the consecration of Russia to Our Lady uh, of Fatima. And we will also consecrate the Ukraine. If you remember, in the early 1900s, Our Lady appeared to the three shepherd children Jacinta, Francesco, and Lucia in Fatima, Portugal. And of the many things that she said, one of the things she asked was that the Holy Father, in union with all the bishops of the world, and this is early 1900s, consecrate Russia to her Immaculate Heart. And she said, if you do that, then I will intercede to my son and ask that the what will come out of Russia, what they will spread, which we kind of which we know now as communism, I will ask him to put that to the side so that peace may come instead. And over the number of years since that time, since Fatima was accepted, people waited for the Pope to do that, to consecrate Russia. And we have seen what has come out of Russia. We've seen communism spread, socialism, it's, it's a twin spread. And we've seen the effects of communism throughout the world. While the Catholic population has waited in expectation for the Holy Father with the bishops to consecrate Russia. The closest we came was during the tenure of uh, Saint Pope John Paul II, who, according to the various sources, wanted to fulfill Our Lady's request and consecrate Russia, but was talked out of it, told that the politics being what they were, and he acquiesced and did not do it, rather consecrate the whole world to Russia, not, as most would say, to fulfill what Our Lady asked. Recently, with this war in Russia, in Ukraine, specifically in Ukraine, the Ukrainian bishops sent a letter, the Catholic bishops sent a letter in mass asking our Holy Father, please, please fulfill what Our Lady did. Do what no Pope prior has done. 
to feel what our lady is asked. And Pope Francis is going to do that. He will do that this Friday at 5 p.m. Roman time. Since they were six hours ahead of us, that will be 11 a.m. our time. So we will join with him with offering a mass, asking Our Lady to please, please uh, speak to Jesus. Stop what's happening in Russia. And not only in Russia, but communism, which is spread throughout the world. So that is our prayer. And that is the Mass. If you are unable to attend, I know it's in an odd time on Friday, then I ask one thing. Set an alarm. Put it on your phone, your watch, wherever you're at. That, set an alarm. 11 a.m. Friday. And then when that alarm goes off Friday, say a prayer. Ask God. Ask Mary. Please. Please. For Russia. So do that, please. Okay. Now, ever so briefly, the homily, as you remember, this, the third weekend of the month, is some aspect of St. Joseph. I had the pleasure of saying Mass, well, not saying, uh, presiding at a, a, at a wedding last night in Baton Rouge at the Cathedral of St. Joseph. And when you come into the cathedral, if you're at the altar, to the size, to all their stained glass is some aspect of the life of St. Joseph. And the second window is the marriage of St. Joseph and Mary. The third window is the incarnation there at the manger. And I thought it very well, and because it applies to the, the homily on Joseph, was the question that the church had to debate about Joseph. Was he necessary for the incarnation to take place? And this incarnation, this moment where God and man join, two natures become one. The church has defined that. And it took years. This is not something that we knew because there's no Catholicism for dummies at this time. So they put this together and they came up with the word hypostasis, meaning substance. If you notice in our Nicene Creed, we pray, we acknowledge that Jesus is of the same substance as the Father. Homoousios, the Greek word. They came up with another word, stasis, homostasis, for the substance. And they said, in that moment of the incarnation, you had what would be called the hypostatic union, where the nature of Jesus and the nature of the word, the nature of humanity, come together and form a perfect union that's so perfect and so complete that the divine nature of God, the Word, does not overshadow the human nature, nor does the human nature diminish the divine nature. Perfectly complete in Jesus, human and divine. The hypostatic union. And they said, was Joseph necessary for this? Well, the obvious answer that most would come would say, well, according to scripture, no. Why? Because according to scripture, the gospel of St. Luke, who did the angel appear to? Mary. Who did the angel question? Mary. Who said fiat, yes, to the incarnation? Mary. Mary's act, her physical acceptance of that beautiful commission to bear God in her womb. That was Mary's doing, solely Mary's doing. 
Joseph was not necessary for that physical act to take place. That was through the power of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> well, they would be partly right. They would. Partly right. But you know what partly right means. You're not mostly right. You're only partly. Because to be mostly right, you would have to realize, wait, hold it now. Joseph did play a part. A part that you, so many of you, know well. And that is the part he played because they were married. The beautiful covenant of marriage where two become one. Where the decision of one is not just a sole decision, but it is joined with the other, a spouse. And in that beautiful decision, when Mary said, fiat, yes, there is an implicit yes by Joseph. And we see that implicit yes in the way Joseph is going to live out his aspect of the vocation of being a foster father. Because when he has the dream and is told that this is an act of God, take Mary into your home, what does he do? He goes with the dream. He marries Mary. This, as I said at the funeral, at the wedding, funeral wedding all of a sudden. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. But, no, something has to die. It has to be the self that dies, the two to one. I had fun with all of that last night. But as I was saying, think about it. Man, if your young bride, Oh, that's the young man. If your young bride came to you and said, oh, by the way, before we fully exchange vows, I know we're engaged. I'm with child. And it's through the power of God. Looked at the young fellow. What would you? <laughs> How many of you? And they're all, no, you know, come on. If my wife said, or engaged fiance said that, no. Joseph does. And that's the amazing aspect of Joseph. He does. Because he has a dream. And that dream is so real to Joseph. That apparition saying this is the work of God. Joseph, a righteous man, does that. Was he necessary? Yes. Because his portion was the moral decision. The moral, yes, that I will not abandon as so many men are capable of doing. I will not abandon my pregnant fiance. I will be a father to that child. I will make the moral commitment to live the best life I can, providing that child with the best example I can. That is the beauty of Joseph's manhood. You know, we see manhood every day put on TV. That's, you know. So you can, what is it? You can shoot down a chopper with a, uh, with a pellet gun. That's manhood. No, it's not manhood. Joseph shows his true manhood. That moral courage to do the right thing. To take care of his wife. It's the same courage that so many do to take care of their family. So many of you participate in that. By the way you live your life. And that is why Joseph is also necessary. We honor Mary and we often think of Mary, she's the mother of God, yes, and look at what she did at the incarnation, yes. 
And sadly, sometimes we push Joseph to the side, like he's just some bystander. He is not. He is necessary. For in the marriage, two become one. Two become one. Joseph and Mary say yes to the incarnation. May Almighty God be with you. May he bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. time that they may be more abundantly nourished by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Let us pray to the Lord. For the whole world, that in lasting tranquility and peace, our days may truly become the acceptable time of grace and salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. For sinners and the neglectful, that in this time of reconciliation, they may return to Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves, that God may at last stir up in our hearts aversion for our sins. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in our community, both here present and those watching on video who are suffering, whether from physical, emotional, or mental illness, that they may be comforted by the resurrected Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For all the prayers that we hold deep in the silence of our hearts, for all of our intentions spoken, and unspoken, joined through the intercession of St. Thomas the Apostle. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord and let us pray for Mr. and Mrs. Bill Wood Smith, for whom this Mass is being offered this night, we pray to the Lord. Lord and let us pray for our Holy Father and all the bishops. As they consecrate Russia and the Ukraine to the Immaculate Heart of Mary on Friday, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Offering all our prayers to the Father, let us conclude the prayer of praise in honor of the Blessed Trinity. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and it shall be, world without end. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Bless me, you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human life, it will become for us the bread of life. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May you always accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good of all His holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you will that our self denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor. And so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Sanctus, 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 Dominus Deus Sabao, Plenisum Celi et Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna e Tegensis, Benedictus Qui Vini, in Nomine Domini, Hosanna e Tegensis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the thought of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord 
Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his time, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for me, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. But not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Agnus Dei. 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 Agnus
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord,